So what does non-duality mean, really? Imagine that you're a kid making a collage out of construction paper. So you have the construction paper, you have the scissors, and you have the glue. So a mind is something that separates, and my mind likes to laugh at the fact that it took me 31 years to realize that that's the function of the mind. But I also realized more recently that it's not only what separates, but what puts things together as well. And things cannot be put together until they're separated, like a jigsaw puzzle, or like a little kid making a collage. So creation, our mind, is what is creation itself. What is this? For what are you? What am I? What is all of this? This is creation. And so creation is like the art project and the artist must be separate from his project. And so when we believe in oneness and spirituality, we fall into the trap of thinking we need time and we need separation. So something must have been separate in the past for it to become one. So we become like a ridiculous a little kid trying to do our art project and we are like no I'm one with my art so we start gluing the art all over our face and get yelled at by our teachers because that's not what creation is supposed to be you're supposed to be separate from your creation and yet always on this fundamental already is actual level that nothing has to be done about whatsoever it's already not two so one implies that something, that there is a possibility. So within the mind right now, when we think of one, <laughs> the negative space of that thought, which is a really important thing to become conscious of, is separation. So one and separation are so like happening at the same time that they are not two. So non-duality tries to say this more accurately and, you know, one sounds so much better. It's so much of an easier sell and so <laughs> much easier to explain, but basically it's super duper simple. So not two is already your experience right now. So when we start to realize the magic of the present moment and how we can only remember the past now and we can only think of the future now how it's all happening now one of the things you realize when you see this and when you go into the power of it is you that you go deeply into your senses and so your senses explanation from the mind are how we experience the world and so we think that we have separate senses. We have five senses or six, if you're open-minded, right? But we don't. Within the present moment, this is all one, not two, sorry. I did it, I did it myself. <laughs> so if you, if you separate out any one sense with the mind and you're actually like, okay, so what's my actual experience of sight? Does sight have borders? And sight is the most dualistic um, sense that there is because we can see borders and other things. But does sight itself have borders? Well, let's look for them. I'm just moving my point of focus to where I think the border, where I guessed the border might be and I will never find it. And so the point of focus itself is an intensely interesting thing because where is the center of your vision? There, there's no center, there's no point that it's a center. Again, you can move your eyes again to try to find that point to look at something else, but there's no center. Even the way the eye physically works itself is an incredible pointer to this. If you, you're, the center of your eye is a black hole that opens to let light in and you have a blind spot in the center of your vision that you're not aware of because your mind fills in the gaps. So our experience is already not two. And this 
turns out to be this kind of love and already isness that needs nothing whatsoever done about it. And this can be one of the traps to different spiritual things and even the trap to non-duality that, that we can understand this outside of the present moment. And so there's something that needs to be done about love. And this is not the case. 